Good morning, everyone. Happy Easter Resurrection Sunday. We're super glad that you chose to join us this morning. We're going to start our service by worshiping together and singing the hymn, Christ the Lord is Risen Today. It's number 302 in your hymnals in front of you, or you can follow along on the screens. So please stand as you are willing and able. Join together in an affirmation of faith from 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and from Colossians chapter 1, and that's on page 888 in your hymnal, or again, that will be on your screen. 
This is the good news which we have received, in which we stand and by which we are saved. Christ died for our sins, was buried, was raised on the third day, and appeared first to the women, then to Peter and the Twelve, and then to many faithful witnesses. We believe Jesus is the Christ, the Anointed One of God, the firstborn of all creation, the firstborn from the dead, in whom all things hold together, in whom the fullness of God was pleased to dwell by the power of the Spirit. Christ is the head of the body, the church, and by the blood of the cross reconciles all things to God. Amen. You may be seated. Well, let me first say Happy Easter to everybody. We are so glad you've chosen to worship with us today. We hope you experience God's love, you sense His presence, you're filled with His Holy Spirit today, and may you leave this place closer to Jesus Christ than when you came, and may you leave this place excited about your faith, excited that your Lord and Savior is risen from the dead and ready to share that good news with family, friends, and all those around you. I'm Pastor Dan, the senior pastor here, and we welcome you to this time of worship. If you are new and visiting with us and would like to share your contact information with us, or if you are a regular attender and your uh, contact information has changed, there are connection cards in the pews. Please uh, fill one of those out, drop it in the offering plate as you, as you leave. Um, we won't, if you're visiting, we won't call and contact you all the time, but we will call, if you give us the information, we will call you at least this one time and say, hey, Thanks for worshiping with us. We're glad you're here. You're definitely invited to come back and join us again. Um, but anyway, anyway, we are glad that you are here worshiping the Lord with us. Let us now continue to worship the Lord by turning our hymnals to page 310. We're going to sing He Lives. We're going to sing verses 1 through 3. You can also, if you don't want to open up your hymnals, the words will be on the screens uh, there behind me. And let us now uh, stay, remain seated for the song and let us sing He Lives.
beautiful singing. At this time in the service, I'd like to dismiss the kids to Children's Church. So the kids, you can go and follow uh, Will and others uh, back to Children's Church. For those of us that remain here, uh, let us take a moment, let us bow our heads, and let us pray. Father God, we are grateful to be gathered with our brothers and sisters in Christ on this Easter Resurrection Sunday, where we can gather and celebrate the fact that you rose from the dead. God, I pray that as we worship you to this morning, that you would fill our hearts, our minds, and our souls with your presence. Let us sense your presence. Let us experience your love. Let us hear your words of truth and grace and mercy. And may they change our hearts and our lives forevermore. And may we leave this place refreshed and renewed in our faith and ready to live that Christian life you've called us to, ready to share the good news of Jesus Christ with our friends, our families, our community, and your world. Lord, I pray that you would um, just be with every person here. Watch over them, protect them, bless them, their family, their friends, and their loved ones in every way possible, God, I pray. May this day be filled with joy and wonderful memories. And I thank you, God. I thank you that you loved us so much, that you would send your son, and that Jesus would be willing to leave perfect paradise in heaven, and that he would be willing to come down to this sinful, broken, messed up world. That he'd be born in a manger stall in Bethlehem. He would grow up and live a sinless and holy life. And while he was here, he would teach us the ways of God. That he would show the world how much God loves his creations. Jesus, while you were here, you taught us the truths of God. You healed the sick and you performed many signs and wonders and miracles. But most of all, Lord, we thank you that at the end of your life, you were willing to go to the cross. You were willing to lay down your life as a payment, as a, for the, as a payment for our sins. Thank you, Jesus, for your love. Thank you for enduring the pain and the suffering of the cross. But God, we're also glad that you just didn't die on the cross for our sins, but that three days later, you rose from the dead. You conquered sin and death. And now you offer us salvation, a chance to be saved and forgiven of our sins, a chance to, be, to find new life through Jesus Christ, a chance to be set free from the bonds of sin and to live a life filled with love, joy, hope, and peace. We thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit, and we thank you for the gift of eternal life with you someday in heaven. Today we celebrate your resurrection, but God, may we be aware too that you offer your resurrection power to all of us, to all who repent of their sins and place their faith in Jesus Christ for their salvation. You will give them resurrection power too, and they will have victory over hell and sin and death, and they will go to live with you forevermore in heaven someday. For that gift, Lord, we say thank you. For all the gifts you've given to us, we say thank you. And God, we also thank you for the gift of prayer. And Jesus, we are grateful that while you were here on this earth, you taught your followers how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now I hope you enjoyed this special music piece.
And now let us continue to worship the Lord by, by turning our hymnals to page 312. We're going to sing, Hail the Day That Sees Him, Sees Him Rise. We're going to sing verses 1 through 4. And also, just so you know, the words will be on the screens. If you don't want to use your hymnal, that is A-OK. -okay. Um, after this song, there will be a video playing. So as soon as the song is done, you may be seated. Just sit down afterwards. There will be no one there to tell you to sit down. So just after the song, please um, just sit down and enjoy the video following us. But this time, I invite you to stand and let us sing 312, Hail the Day that Sees Him Rise. They stripped him, and twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and put a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and led him away to crucify him. a place called Golgotha. They put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. From the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land. Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom and the earth shook and the rocks were split. His body was placed in a tomb cut out of the rock. At dawn on Sunday, the women went to see the tomb. An angel of the Lord had descended from heaven and rolled back the stone. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen. Well, today I've titled my message, The King is Risen. But before we talk about Jesus' resurrection, I just want to point out one thing that I think is kind of interesting about human beings. And that is, human beings can be fickle sometimes, can't they? We can change our minds and, and, and change our opinions and attitudes very quickly, can't we? When I read the scriptures in the last week of Jesus' life, it always amazes me that on Sunday, Jesus enters Jerusalem triumphantly and the people want to crown him king of the Jews and they're throwing their, their cloaks and they're throwing palm branches before him and they're shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And then just a few days later, those same people with those same mouths, they're shouting, crucify him, crucify him. And they're mocking him and insulting him while he hangs there on a cross. My, how quickly people's attitudes and opinions of Jesus changed that first Holy Week. And to me, I can totally understand the first part. I can totally understand them wanting to crown Jesus King. I mean, Jesus is wise. He's loving. He's good. He's just. He's merciful and kind. All the qualities you would want in a king. Plus, Jesus could heal the sick, cast out demons, multiply food, and even raise dead people back to life. And in, the, and in that century, the Jews, most of those Jewish teachers taught people that the Messiah was coming, but he was going to be what, what we call now today a militant Messiah. That he was going to come and he was going to set the Jewish people free from Roman oppression and he was going to reestablish the throne of David and, and Israel would be its own free, independent nation once again. And who better? If that's what you thought the Messiah was going to be, who better than Jesus to be your king and to lead you in a fight against the Roman government. Have you ever wondered what it would be like if Jesus came and, and fulfilled that and was, was the militant Messiah that the Jews were expecting? I mean, can you picture Jesus reestablishing the throne of King David and being crowned king of the Jews, and then he assembles a small army to fight against the Roman Empire. Well, his, his soldiers and his armies, they'd need food and supplies and weapons, and Jesus could just pray and multiply the food and the supplies and the weapons. Can you picture Jesus as the Israelis are fighting against the Roman Empire? As, as the Israeli soldiers are getting injured, he's healing them. And as they die, he raises them back to life. It'd make for a great movie, wouldn't it? It really would. But Jesus did not come to set the Jews free from Roman oppression. He came to do something bigger. He came to do something better. 
He came to set the human race free from the bondage of sin. He came to offer salvation to everyone who had placed their faith and, and trust in Jesus Christ for their salvation. He came to usher in a new covenant between God and human beings that could help us be in a right relationship with God, our Creator. Jesus, the King of Heaven, came to be the Savior of the world. But in order to save humankind, the Savior had to die. Because the Scriptures teach us that the penalty for sin is death. Someone has to die. Either the sinner has to die for his sins or someone has to live a holy and pure and righteous life and die in that person's place. So Jesus came, lived a sinless life, and then he died for us to pay the penalty for our sins. The Scriptures record how Jesus died, and I'd like to share some of those Scriptures with you. Beginning with Matthew 27, Starting at verse 26, it says this, Pilate had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And then they twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand and then they knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews! They spit on him and took the staff from him and struck him on the head again and again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off, his, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. And then they led him away to crucify him. The story continues. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots. And sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above his head, they placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Two rebels were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults on him, shaking their heads and saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Others said, Come down from the cross if you are the Son of God. In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He thinks, sorry, he's the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. Others said, he trusts in God. Let God rescue him now, if God wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. In the same way, the rebels who were crucified with him also heaped insults on him. From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over the land. And about three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then a few verses later, it says this, and when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks split and the tombs broke open. The bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake, and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, Surely he was the Son of God. After Jesus dies, the scriptures tell us this, As the evening approached, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. Joseph took the body wrapped it in clean linen cloth and placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut out of the rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the entrance to the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting there opposite the tomb. You know, when I read these scriptures, when I read the story of Jesus' death, 
Sometimes I just sit there and go, wow. Wow. The creator of the universe, the creator of our world, the creator of the human race, allowed his creations to kill his one and only son, Jesus Christ. And let's be honest, we killed him in a very gruesome and horrible way, didn't we? I mean, we had people spitting on him and ripping out his beard. We had people, he got flogged, that's whipped with a cat of nine tails, 39 lashes. We had soldiers do up a crown of thorns and then beat him over the head with a, with a staff. And then after all that, we tell him to carry his cross outside the city to be crucified. And when he gets to, the, when he gets to Golgotha, we lay him down and we nail him to the cross. Those big nine-inch nails going through his, through his feet and through his hands. And then what amazes me most in this story is what does Jesus do after all of that? After we did all this horrible stuff to him, as, as he's hanging there on the cross in tons of pain and agony, he says, "My God, he says, Father, Forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. i got to be honest. If I was Jesus, I don't know if I could do that. Ask yourself, could you do that? After someone just whipped you 39 times with a cat of nine tails, that's nine strands with glass and rocks on it, being whipped across your back. And after they just put nails to your hands and through your feet... Could you say, Father, forgive them? They don't know what they're doing. But that's how much Jesus loves you and me. He willingly went to the cross. He willingly endured all those horrible things that we put him through. And then he still looks up to the Father and says, Father, forgive them. Don't hold this against them. I find that amazing. We call that amazing grace, amazing love, amazing mercy. Eventually, Jesus does die. And Joseph of Arimathea asks for Jesus' body. He then wraps Jesus' body in linen cloths and places him in a tomb and has a large stone rolled in front of it. You know, the Jewish leaders in the Roman Empire, they thought this was going to be the end of the story. Kill the leader of the movement and then the movement will disperse and go away and we won't have this problem anymore. But the good news is, my friends, the story does not end there. Yes, on Friday, humans killed Jesus. But on Sunday, Jesus, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, He rose from the dead and He left those linen cloths in that empty tomb. He then appeared to some of His followers that day and over the next 40 days, He appeared to many followers to prove to them, to show them that He had risen from the dead. Matthew 28, 1 through 10, tells us part of the resurrection story, and I want to share this with you. It says this After the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and, going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and they ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. And they came to him and clasped his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. 
There they will see me. Friends, did you hear that? The angel told the women, Jesus is not here. He has risen. And then he invites them to go into the tomb with him and to see the empty tomb, see where his dead body once laid, and see that it is no longer there. And then he tells them to go and tell the disciples, tell the other followers that Jesus Christ has risen. Tell them what you've seen. Tell them what you've heard from the angel. I don't know what you, but the story could have ended right there, and I would have been happy. Right? I mean, raise your hand if you'd love to see an angel someday. It'd be really cool, wouldn't it? And that would just make my day right there. That's all I would need right there. An angel tells me God's risen. That's all I need to hear. I got to see the empty tomb. That's great. But the story doesn't end there. As they are being faithful to what the angel told them to do, to go and tell the other disciples, the resurrected Lord, Jesus Christ himself, appears to the women. And he says, hey, hey guys, greetings. And when they see him, they run to Jesus and, and they bow down before him and they're clasping his feet and they're worshiping him and they're talking to him. And eventually, after the conversation, Jesus says, now go. Go and tell Peter and James and John. Tell the disciples that I have risen from the dead. Tell them to go to Galilee because there they will see me. I think this is an amazing story. That would, I would have loved to have been there with the women to see the angel, to see the empty tomb, to see the resurrected Lord. Would have loved, loved to have been there. What a joy-filled day that day was. Jesus, the King of heaven, my friends, he's alive. And he will be alive forevermore. In fact, that's one thing I actually love about Christianity. You know, you look at all the other religions that are out there. They follow the teachings of a dead man. But is that true of Christianity? It is not. We follow the teachings of a resurrected Lord. A God, a person who's going to be alive forevermore. And I think that's great. And that is good news. Jesus, our King, He conquered sin and death and is now alive forevermore. And now, here's the even better news, now our gracious King offers us a chance to conquer sin and death too. All we have to do is repent of our sins and be baptized for the remission of our sins and we will be forgiven. We'll be released from the bondage of sin. We'll be born again and given new life through Jesus Christ. We'll be adopted into his family and become children and heirs of the kingdom of heaven. And my friends, when followers of Jesus Christ die, they go to heaven and they become citizens in the kingdom of God. And they live in heaven with God and the angels and the followers have gone before them for all eternity. Jesus, the Savior of the world, offers us grace and a chance to be forgiven of our sins. Jesus, the resurrected Lord, wants to give you and me and all of us resurrection power too. Jesus, the King of heaven, he offers us victory over hell and death. That is the good news of Christianity. That is the good news that you need to believe and you need to receive. That is the good news that we need to share with the world. Friends, Jesus, the King of heaven, loves you. And he died on a cross to save you. And he rose again, triumphant from that grave, to offer you resurrection power. I hope you'll respond positively to his love. That you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And that he fills you with his love, his grace, his truth, his mercy, his kindness. And one day, may you experience that resurrection power too. And rise and go be with the Lord who loves you and live in perfect paradise for all eternity with God and the angels and the followers of God. My friends, the King is risen. May we follow the risen King. Let's pray. Jesus, we are grateful that you died for us. 
But even more so, we are grateful that you rose from the dead, that you conquered sin and death, and now you offer us that resurrection power too, and that you offer us eternal life in heaven with you someday. What an amazing and great gift that you offer to all of us. And it's a free gift. It costs you everything, but it costs us nothing. All we have to do is repent and place our faith and trust in you and follow you all the days of our lives. And as you lead us down a life of loving God and loving others, may you bless us. And God, someday we all look forward to being raised back to life and living with you for all eternity. Today, Lord, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the resurrection power you offer to all of us. And we thank you for it. In the precious and powerful name of Jesus Christ, we pray all this. Amen. Today is the most important day in history. And I think a lot of times we get used to viewing Easter or Resurrection Sunday as just another holiday for us, right? Like we have Christmas and we have Easter, we have Good Friday. But today is the most important day because today is when Jesus did what he said he was going to do. Today is what Christianity hinges on because if he wouldn't have resurrected, then Good Friday and Christmas would have meant nothing. It wouldn't have mattered. Today is where he truly fulfilled everything that he said and everything that he was going to do. The church wouldn't have spread as much. Like, do you think the disciples would have been so eager to spread his message if he wouldn't have came back to life and, and came back to, him, to them? So today is what and why we celebrate, why we celebrate our faith. And that's why the church has spread so much. Today is the good news of Christianity. And that's why we give as a, to the church so that we can spread that good news. And it's through your offerings, it's through your gifts that we're able to do that so that so many people can hear about today, about why Christianity is different because no other person has resurrected on their own power other than Jesus. So there are many different ways that you can give and those are on the screen. But we're going to listen to this next song, and we ask that you just meditate on that truth. And after this next song, we'll all stand together. No one will come up here to announce it, but we'll all stand together and sing Praise God from Whom All Blessings Flow, and that will be on the screen as well. So during this next song, um, we ask that you listen to the Spirit and what he might be leading you to give.
Let's pray together. Dear Lord, we thank you for today. Thank you that this is the day that you have made, and let us rejoice and be glad in it. Not only that it's a day that you have made, but this is the day, the most perfect, amazing day, the day that changes everything. And we ask that you remind us of that, that today you did something no one else was able to do, and that you changed everything for us. God, we thank you that we get to come together and celebrate that today with um, our congregation, with our fr family, with our friends. And God, we ask that you just bless this offering, that every single penny goes out for your will, for your kingdom, um, and ultimately so that people know about today, what you did almost 2,000 years ago today. So we thank you so much for this offering. and. We thank you so much for today, and we love you, and we praise you, and we pray all of this in your good, holy, and risen name. Amen. We're going to sing one last song together called Crown Him with Many Crowns, which is number 327 in your hymnal. We'll be, re we'll be singing one through four verses, and it will also be up on the screen.
Well, once again, I hope you've enjoyed worshiping with us today. Next week, we'll start another series entitled God's Reward Plan. So if you want to know what God's reward plan is, come back next week and join us the next few weeks as we discover what God's reward plan is. And can we take a moment, can we give a round of applause to our instrumentalists and musicians that have been here all day? Thank you. Sincerely, thank you for offering your gifts, your time, and your talents to the church today to help lead us in worship and celebration of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and his resurrection. Um, it has been a blessing to worship with you and to have your talents here this morning. And it has been a blessing to worship with you as well. And now I pray that you go in God's love, grace, truth, and power. May his love and power fill your hearts today. And may it fill you with love and joy and peace and hope. And may you share that love, joy, hope, and peace with those around you. And share the story of Jesus. More people need to hear it. So share the good news. Go in God's grace and glory today and now and forevermore. Amen.